So let's get started. First of all, thank you for uh, welcoming me and giving me the floor uh, in the Heritage Language Consortium sem seminars. And I, I hope uh, you will uh, take some insights of what has been done here uh, in as far as teacher education in heritage language teaching is concerned and the experience I have been uh, building uh, with others, of course, uh, during these uh, years that I've been working here in um, in Switzerland. So first, of all, we are going to talk about, of course, heritage language education, and I prefer education other than training, uh, then teacher professional knowledge and development, and then we're talking about the challenges and opportunities in teacher education in heritage language teaching, and then final remarks. So we start by heritage language education and I prefer really education to training because training for me or for my, my um, representation has more to do with technical and um, practical parts and education has much more to do with the, uh, the complexity of what is to teach and what is also to learn how to teach and develop our, uh, in teaching. So it has, it is usually said that uh, teaching heritage language is in this continuum between one X of mother language teaching and the other one of foreign language teaching. And as one of the teachers says here, that it is not one, not the other one, but it is also teaching the, both of them. And that's why it is very difficult, as she says, in fine tuning a joint idea of what it is to teach and educate in this heritage language teaching context. So I would say that this heritage language teaching context is really much more than just these two axes, and it also involves all other uh, ex language experiences that uh, heritage language uh, learners have. So all the ling linguistic repertoire that uh, each learner has, it has to do also with heritage language education. So it is much more than just this continuum. It is all the rest that uh, uh, encompasses this uh, this continuum that we usually refer to. So heritage language teaching is like a space of mediation between many languages and cultures. Uh, and uh, the, the job of the teacher is to assist identity construction of these speakers, of course, by uh, the input, linguistic and cultural input, developing the plurilingual and intercultural competencies, and always having this special relationship to language which has to do with effect and with identity. So heritage language teaching is really a kind of balance between teaching and caring, not only the language, but also the relationship to the language, to the culture, and in this space of mediation among languages. If we think about this, the Maslow, uh, pyramid of the, the basic needs, we would situate perhaps the, the language, heritage language teaching within the last level uh, here between self-esteem and then the, uh, the self-development of the, of, the, of the learner. And this is done with this effect, with this um, special relationship that both teachers and learners have to the language. So it is in this, in the, on the edge of these levels that the, uh, that teach heritage language teachers really act. And this is something which makes them, uh, these teachers unique and a very special characteristic for the teachers or also for of the students and of the teaching situation as well. So, Heritage language speakers have specific characteristics and the ones who uh, are listening and are linguists, they know uh, this much more uh, than, than I do and much better. But we always have to think, uh, to think that 
all the uh, heritage speakers have different patterns of acquisition, exposition to language, either oral or written. So they develop different communicative competences. They also have different opportunities for language use. Uh, some speak at home, some don't. And also they have a very different uh, levels of effective relationship with language, culture and country because some have many relatives still in the country and speak to them, go there regularly, but others don't. So this makes from, uh, well, from these, uh, uh, our learners, from heritage language learners, a very uh, distinct learners and the, the teaching must aim at the, 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 the learner himself, herself. So it is very difficult to be able to just think of a lesson plan or a teach or a, 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 um, an education plan for the teachers that has just the same pattern. It doesn't. So when talking about heritage language uh, teaching teachers and their characteristics, we have to also to know that most of the times heritage language is not in the curriculum and the results uh, usually are not relevant for the academic success or at least to the, comp to the compulsory system. Um, also, uh, the academic background of the teachers is sometimes of port teaching Portuguese as foreign language or mother, la uh, mother language, or even here in Switzerland, also uh, other uh, academic background, not only of languages. They know the host language. It is uh, compulsory for people who work for Camões. They work as uh, displaced public workers. So they, they come to another country, but still working to, within Portuguese regulations and to Portugal. Uh, in some cases where, where associations teach heritage language teaching, it is different. Uh, must, but mostly they are not included in the school's teaching staff and it is a, a solitary work. So if we see the characteristics of the heritage language speakers and the characteristics of the teachers, they are also unique. So this may turns all this atmosphere something very special and which has to be understood as that and has to be dealt with uh, with the kind of uh, uh, with uh, um, trying to understand uh, better that the context is not the regular teaching context of uh, schools or of compulsory education. Oh, sorry. So if we talk about teacher professional knowledge, which is the knowledge that teachers must have in order to be able to teach, these teachers also possess, also have this professional knowledge. And it is generally described into eight interwoven dimensions, which interact it within each other. And we all have all teachers have these uh, or must have these dimensions within the, their professional knowledge. So it's the curriculum and for the heritage language, there is also a, curr a curriculum, specific didactics. And this is the specificity that the teacher education plans also target. Content, language, culture. Uh, the educational goals and values, what we really aim at uh, as a, the final goal. Then knowing the learners and their characteristics that we have already talked about a little uh, earlier. The educational context, so it is different to teach here in Switzerland in a canton where uh, German is spoken or in canton where French is spoken. Um, because the regulations are different, the way people react at, in school are also different. And uh, also about pedagogy, they, the teachers must know, they must have this knowledge. And something else which has been added lately has to do with supervision. So that's uh, the, the kind of knowledge teachers have to possess, to, to have, to dispose of, 
to be able to look at themselves, look at others and be able to reflect on their own practice and uh, or practice of others and be able to reconstruct practices, reconstruct concepts and go on developing themselves. Also, it is important when teaching, when, um, when planning an education uh, plan for teachers to establish priorities for the professional development and also to know what is the main aim we want to achieve with this teaching uh, uh, teacher education plan. And there are mainly these three dimensions of the educational activity we aim at. Uh, the technical scientific dimension is almost always there because it has to do with what teachers do in their classes, with practice, with activities, with uh, unit plans, with uh, um, assessment, all those things that are uh, visible uh, in a classroom. But then also it has to do with the ethical and political dimension and also with the aesthetic dimension. And those two dimensions are not that present when we talk or when we plan uh, the teacher education, not only for heritage language teachers, but mainly for, uh, for all. Because, uh, and, but special for uh, heritage language teachers, it is very important to know uh, to make this, uh, to make them aware of this uh, ethical political dimension, because uh, languages, as you we all know, have uh, have power which is associated to them, and uh, learners must be, uh, or we should uh, make them aware of the power that language that languages have inside themselves and associated to themselves. Um, and this is something that also should be embedded in the activities, in the classes, in the texts, in the discussions. And the aesthetic dimension that has to do with character building, with, uh, with uh, what, we, how we act as human beings and uh, the, of your, the, the meaning we, have, we, we assume for education. So these three dimensions must also be um, present when we plan for teacher education. And going on talking about the profile and the specificity of these teachers, I chose this, um, this painting by Van Gogh because uh, it's how I, I see the, pro the profile of heritage language teachers. They are, they are the in-between professionals because they, uh, well, and if we're talking about the Portuguese heritage language teachers, they are Portuguese, mostly, uh, and all of them have done their, um, their studies in Portugal. They still work for Portugal. They are uh, working with Portuguese language and culture. So they are, um, they are here uh, turning present the Portuguese culture and Portuguese values and Portuguese language every day, but they are also in another country. They are also in Switzerland. They also have teacher education here that they also attend. They also have uh, to know the context here. They have to know the, the, um, the, the, um, the, the school culture of, of, school, of the schools where they are. They sometimes they, um, they can collaborate with uh, the Swiss teachers. So these, these teachers uh, are from one place, but they are also in the other place. That's why I call them these in-between professionals. They have to be able to combine both uh, or sometimes not only Portuguese and uh, what so, or Switzerland, but sometimes other origins of themselves or of the, of the pupils. So uh, it is really a very specific profile of these uh, heritage language teachers, which has to be taken into account when we plan and when we work with them uh, on teacher development. So teacher professional development is where we come now and it 
it is also uh, planned and thought for every teacher. And also uh, the, the research has explained that and has shown that there are many dimensions that also have to be taken into account. And all those are also, uh, uh, also apply to heritage language teachers. The, the specificity of these teachers is that they have different contexts, different uh, students, and also a little bit different content. So professional development is a process, and a process that has to do with the teacher's characteristics, and also with what they teach, as we see, uh, as I have been saying, the her heritage language and all these characteristics, and of course, how they teach. So they have to know how they will approach to the language work, culture work with their learners in a way that it is motivating and that they are going to learn. But professional development has also to do with collaborating with others, with knowing about the school context, uh, and also with activities that can be formal or informal. And all this is part of the professional development process. So when we talk about heritage language teaching edu teacher education, we it is not just a workshop, not just a course, not just special activities that are designed for teachers to attend in order to uh, develop, enhance their, um, their skills as teachers. Everything that they do and everything that they can exchange with their peers is important for the professional development and it, it is an integral part of it. So let's talk a little more directly on heritage language teacher education. Well, the usual starting point of all teachers, all heritage language teachers, is that they don't have a specific preparation to teach heritage language. As we see, as we saw, the teachers here in, in, in Switzerland, also uh, teachers in other um, parts, uh, well, at least the teachers for Camões, they uh, come from Portugal and they didn't have this specific preparation. They, as we have seen, they are isolated sometimes and they are scattered all around the, the country. They are aware of challenges of, and difficulties, even if they are experienced, they are more aware. If they are unexperienced, they are uh, not so aware, but they know that they are going to find many. And they, there is a, this need to share and discuss the professional experiences. So if we uh, offer uh, training opportunities, education opportunities that are planned to meet the needs, of course, they will attend our, all the teacher education offers that are, um, that are offered to them. And that has been what has uh, been happening here in Switzerland. So if we want, uh, the professional development to be effective, of course, teacher practices are going to be improved. And effective professional development has to do with content, so it is content focused, so it has to do with what the teachers do in their classes with their uh, children, their pupils. It, it incorporates active learning, so they have to be active in in all these courses, have to collaborate, they have to th think about effective practice, but they also have to have uh, coaching, they have to have feedback, there has to be special time for reflection, the, 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 the time of the uh, education offers must be sustained, it's not just one, uh, three hours without anything else. It has to have a certain duration, uh, otherwise it won't be effective. And being effective ensures the sustainability, which is really very important. So the design of the teacher education offers has to account for professional, cultural, 
institutional and personal context because as we saw before the characteristics of the teacher are very important for the professional development we have to have time we have to build environments to experiment and foster innovation promote the reflective sharing with the examples uh, encourage the development of a professional project and I must say that all the teachers here in uh, Switzerland they start every two years uh, by uh, writing their uh, professional development project which then I, I read and then I give feedback on what they, they say. Uh, peer collaboration supervision has to be encouraged and always this feedback which is very important so to be effective and to really learn and be able to develop as heritage language teacher but as any teacher the design of teacher education has to have these um, these features and we also have to think that uh, what we are doing, we are trying to empower teachers so that they uh, are going to be able to go on uh, developing themselves in a sustainable way. So the axis of the teacher education programs have been these three axes. So the contextual experience, what the teachers know about the context, the collaboration between them, and we also had research. So with the context, we can really respond to the problems of the teachers. Uh, we can also throw or make them aware of what is uh, of the, that there are many languages, many cultures, and that we have to be aware of them and put them into also into our classes. We should be flexible, but also empowering the learning process and empowering teachers to the to this sense of belonging as a group, uh, because if they have this, if this sense of belonging to a group is uh, really reinforced, the collaboration can be much more fruitful. And of course, we strengthen the professional knowledge by research, and by them we also empower teachers. And uh, here in Switzerland, we also uh, have had um, success in this, uh, this area because some teachers have started writing about their works and publishing texts with things that they do in their classes with their, their pupils. <clears throat> if we look at <clears throat> the needs of the last three years, which were expressed by the teachers here, we see that there are two main fields that are pointed out, which has to do with planning, teaching. Uh, so what am I going to do with my pupils in this class? Uh, how, uh, how, do I, uh, how do I build uh, a, a unit plan? What kind of activities do I put in the beginning, in the middle, in the end? And also with methodology and didactics and that the huge problem is what I have pointed out before, which has to do with the, the diverse uh, um, types or profiles of the um, um, heritage language learners, because most of the teachers uh, not only have different pupils before them, because they are they all have different uh, kinds of relationship with language and culture, but also they have pupils that uh, whose uh, ages range between sometimes six years old and 18 or six and 15 or 12 and 18. So they have different uh, proficiency levels in their classes. So this is something that really uh, is uh, always a need for the teachers to reflect, to develop, to find more um, uh, and better ways of coping with diversity and uh, heterogeneity in classes. So the strategy that we have been conducting is not only an interactive strategy, but also a bottom-up strategy. So that has to do with, first of all, knowing the teachers and their practices know what they know because teachers know what they do and teachers can produce their own knowledge. 
then what we did here is together what is the professional knowledge which is available and make it circulate so it means people have to share teachers share what they know and this has been done been done in the uh, sem seminars we do every two years and design also the professional development with the teachers active collaboration like this and uh, and ensuring a safe learning atmosphere. Then we have teacher education plans, which are really, um, which really meet the needs of the teachers and which are uh, a, a place where teachers can really develop and become more motivated to innovate, to try out, to, to talk to colleagues and to show what they do. So I bring some examples of what we have been doing uh, here in Switzerland, <clears throat> only three. The first one I bring here is what I called Manhãs Transformadoras, which has to do transformative mornings and mornings because teachers work after the regular school timetable here. It was an action, pro-action research proje project and it had to do uh, well the, the main main objective was to put to have teachers that uh, could collaborate between themselves in order to make them um, have more contact among them and also to share their practices so it was uh, a way to support and developing the teaching process and practice to promote the collaborative work, as I already said, and also to promote awareness or consolidation of their identity as heritage language teachers. They share the same context, they share the same needs. So this was a working space that was conducted uh, um, well along through three uh, school years and uh, it has really uh, been a, a working space that has constructed pro a professional network and the where collaboration has really been been enhanced enhanced and here are some of the things that teachers say uh, i will not read all of them uh, because then we don't have time but uh, First of all, um, working in partnership, a partnership has to do <clears throat> having to deal with different ways of thinking, planning activities. I can achieve more and with a better quality. Uh, then also exchange number three, the exchange of ideas allows us to evolve and even change some practices and behaviors. Um, also, they spend more time in creating diversified materials and improving, enriching the work, ability to reflect on the practices and to know or remember some practices uh, that uh, they can integrate in classes. And excuse me for the spelling mistakes there, mm -hmm. I only see now. <laughs> And it is always uh, it is always uh, good to bring what the teachers say about their uh, uh, about these uh, processes of uh, teacher education, so that it's not only my words. Another example is the the one that I had mentioned before is this conference that happens every two years. Um, I thought of it uh, in 2014. It was the first one because uh, teacher knowledge, uh, as I told before, uh, teachers know what they do, teachers have, should share what they do, and uh, they have built very much knowledge on, on working in the field throughout uh, lots of years, and it is from this knowledge that we have, or as teacher educators, we have to build on and expand and uh, deepen. So uh, this is something that is uh, also already institu institutionalized. Um, and we are going to have our fifth uh, conference in 2023. And this is what uh, <clears throat> 
one of the teachers who was, was also responsible for the organization of this um, of the last uh, conference uh, said in the in the beginning in the end of the conference sorry and uh, she says at the at the end we go home now and i'm sure richer and above all fully aware of our role so it means that uh, now now this 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 group of teachers also know the main goals the three areas when the, the goals are when uh, we plan teacher education we should not only aim at uh, this practical pr uh, practical aspects of activities and planning but also knowing that there are the other dimensions that have to be addressed uh, at as the political and ethical dimension and also aesthetic dimension and this is something that happens only when they they are involved in the planning of the things and we think we with them all the the aspects the other uh, the third example i bring uh, is the participation in research projects the first one was mediation in heritage language teaching and it was uh, developed um, by uh, me here in Switzerland with uh, our colleague in Luxembourg. We were in 2018 uh, when the complementary volume of the uh, Common European Framework of Reverence was released. And we thought that mediation is what heritage language is all about. So we uh, wanted to try out some of the descriptors and so our aim was to understand how the descriptors could really help in planning, implementing, assess assessing the activities to foster the development of the mediation competence of the heritage language learners and uh, we are about to, um, to go uh, now next month to Luxembourg yeah, it's Strasbourg, sorry, to for the, um, the publication of the vo volume where our study is. And there were uh, four teachers involved here and 13 in Luxembourg. And uh, the, main, the main learning of this uh, project was that mediation has always been there, but now they are aware of it. Now they can uh, uh, make uh, or they can talk to pupils in a different way about mediation and make them also aware because mediation as i told before is there uh, we are in languages between languages among languages and culture uh, cultures and um, that's our job so it, it was really a very enriching project and the second project growing up bilingual in switzerland uh was done or just uh, was born um as a consequence or with the 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 need of knowing how to help the the learners in their writing skills because uh, it's always a problem not only for uh, heritage language learners but all foreign language learners also have this problem uh, and we all know writing is difficult, so um, we had this need and uh, I, uh, I thought we could uh, ask Christina Flush for, uh, um, to come here and help us and first of all make a kind of um, previous study what were the main difficulties that the teachers would, um, uh, would be able to identify and then the research project was uh, born. Uh, we um, many almost 500 uh, pupils and their families uh, took part in it, and uh, it uh, we wanted really to provide evidence to show that the development of the proficiency in the heritage language has no negative effects on the development of the majority language, and so this construct this construct this meat that. Um, uh, you shouldn't learn Portuguese, otherwise you can't learn French or German that sometimes some parents think or even some teachers also say. I'm running because uh, then we'll have out of time. <clears throat> 
And this is the last example, uh, which is sharing among us. And this has, be, has begun in December 2012, uh, 2020. Uh, and it is a, a virtual space in our virtual uh, teacher's room. And teachers uh, are come and share their practices within all these topics that you see here. And teachers um, come, uh, listen, ask questions, comment. Uh, and this is um, a a space of just for teachers just to share in a informal way about things they do in their classes and this is also something that is uh, that contributes for their professional development and acts as a, a teacher education offer so the characteristics of successful teacher education offers as always to do with this joint uh, joint uh, work of collaborative work, individual work, and that empowers teachers, expands the professional development and aims at sustainable pro uh, professional development. So all teacher education have this link with the reconstructive interaction among teachers. And it is done in two phases always, observation analysis of what people do or of what uh, 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 an educator, a teacher educator comes and says if it is a course or a workshop and then a part of appropriation and action. And that has always to do with questioning their own practices, but with these premises, articulating theory and practice, also taking the object of work, so the language or culture or the way we do it into object of analysis and experimentation. The student is always at the center and the teacher is rep responsible for the teaching and also to have a broader awareness of heritage language education and the educational purposes. And this also, the, all these, um, uh, uh, the, the, this, um, the, this set where the questioning of the practice is done, either fosters or prevents professional development, because te teachers can feel empowered if they uh, go on with this questioning, or they can also feel it is too much uh, and they don't uh, don't follow this, uh, this scheme. But then uh, there is the, the um, this is the job of the teacher educator. The teacher, the teacher educator is there to to um, to be able to motivate the teachers, to be able to give them the necessary support so that they can really uh, embark in this questioning their own practices and try to find in the individual and in the collaborative work their own professional development. So the final remarks, <clears throat> I would say that we have been taking challenges as opportunities. So the challenge we face is the opportunity to solve it and to build it up and to be able to learn from it. So the, the knowledge about teacher education we have been building has to do with reflection, action, research, our three axes. And it is always built with students, teachers and researchers. And we take into account the characteristics of the heritage language speakers, but also the characteristics of the teachers. It is also very, very important. Challenges for teacher education and teacher practice. I see heritage language teachers as language, language curators, not in the sense they have to take care of pure language or whatever, but to acknowledge that there is this constant language contact in this uh, in the context of language um, heritage language education, uh, they should be flexible enough to be able to design processes that will accommodate the modes and the expressions of the heritage language learners and speakers because they 
they introduce in their repertoire many, many different words from the ones we acknowledge as Portuguese or other language. And therefore, it is really, it is crucial to uh, develop the metic linguistic competence of heritage uh, language learners. Like this, they can really adapt their linguistic and cultural repertoire to the context, to the interaction, and be able to be aware of how they speak, how they ex express themselves, be aware of their own linguistic uh, knowledge. And to end, also to say that a further challenge is to look at heritage language, not just a satellite, has a satellite of language education, because it is not a satellite. It should be inside language education. Heritage language belongs to language education, like mother language uh, uh, teaching, like foreign language teaching, second language teaching. So it is inside and not just a satellite. And these are my references. And thank you very much for your patience. And now I'll stop sharing.